Hey, what's going on everybody? This is Rob Willis.info here, and today I want to talk about how to set up your very own media server. Um, now, I have done a few videos on this topic a couple years back, and quite a few people have been asking for an updated version, so here it is. Um, for the video, I'll be using a Windows 10 VM with 4 vCPUs and 4 gigabytes of RAM. And uh, for the software portion, I'll be using Plex for my media server, which is free and lightweight, but it also has a very robust feature set. And uh, it's just a great media server. So if I set up a media server nowadays, this is what I'll typically end up using. All right, so to get started, the first thing we have to do is browse over to Plex.tv. And uh, this is where we're going to go ahead and download the application as well as set up the uh, free account if you want to get into all that. Now, I'm going to show you how to do the install and set up Plex without the account, but you can always come back later and set up the account to take advantage of the features that come along with that. So now let's go to Downloads at the top. And you'll notice that it gives us two options mainly here. Um, there's Plex Media Server for the computer or your NAS. And there's also some client applications down at the bottom here for like mobile apps, smart TVs, and your home theater. In this case, we're going to go with Plex Media Server for the computer. And when it pops up, we want to make sure we click on Windows and click Download the English version. And then click Save File to go ahead and download the file. All right, so we should just take a minute or so for that to download. I believe it is about 100 megs or so. Uh, but once it's downloaded, you can go ahead and click on it to launch the installer. All right, and let's click on it to launch it. All right, so that should pop up in a second here. There we go. And let's go ahead and minimize Firefox in the background too. And uh, so let's go ahead and click on install on the installer. And you'll notice it pops up here. And we want to click yes to allow this program to make changes to the system. And uh, basically go ahead and let Plex install and do its thing at this point. Alright, so now that that's complete, let's go ahead and click on launch to close out the installer and launch the Plex application. Alright, so now we'll see that a, a new Firefox window pops up and it has our online Plex uh, registration or login. And uh, this is the account that I mentioned that we saw you could create whenever you first went to Plex.tv. Uh, if you have one of those accounts, that's great. You can use that to log in right now. Um, but if you've used Plex in the past, you'll know that it, um, it basically runs a local web server on this machine. And uh, we can access that uh, locally by just browsing to it directly. And uh, the way to do that is to specify the IP address. So we're going to use the local loopback, which is 127.0.0.1. And then specify the port of 32,400 and then slash web for the directory and you'll notice that it takes us to the local Plex install and uh, it asks us to accept the EULA and then this is where we can go ahead and configure our Plex media server. Alright so you'll notice on the left hand menu we have two options status and settings. If you go to the status page it just gives you general alerts about the server who's playing what content off of it and whatnot. But if we go to the settings, this is where the meat of the configuration of our server is. And uh, you'll notice it shows you the version. Is it up to date? You can also set the name of the server. There's also options to fill in the, uh, the remote access stuff along with your online account and, uh, and whatnot. Um, but this is basically where you'll go to do all of your configuration for the server. Um, so if we go back, we see that there's the remote options. So you can stream remotely. Um, the agents, library settings. We're going to go with most of the defaults here. Um, the library, you can control how often it updates and stuff. Um, the network settings, we're going to just, like I said, stick with the majority of the defaults. Um, the transcoder, if you have a lot of CPU on the server, you may want to change it to the, uh, the make my CPU hurt setting or adjust that as, you know, depending on the size of your box and the available resources. Um, other than that, we're going to stick with the majority of the defaults here. And then there's also options for languages and um, DLNA playback, which is mainly what I'm concerned about using this for here, because I'm just going to be using it for local playback to stream from the server to PlayStations and Android devices and whatnot. All right, so now it's time to add a library to our server. So back at the main menu, on the left-hand side, click Add Library. And then we're going to select a type. In this case, I'm going to do Movies. And then we'll go ahead and click on Next to select the folder that we want. And we'll click Browse for Media Folder. And I actually have a folder named Media on my desktop that are already has some content in it. So I'm just going to go ahead and select that, click Add, and let's go ahead and add the library into the server. All right, so that should take just a second to import that content and generate the thumbnails. Now note that on the settings page under the library section, there are some options for how often it automatically re-indexes this folder and looks for new content to be added. Or you can actually um, just manually tell it to force run that job and uh, bring your new content in. So in case you just add some new stuff and you don't see it in there yet, you could just do it manually. Um, but that's basically it. The server's fully configured and uh, we can go ahead and test it from more devices now. 
All right, so you'll notice here I have a uh, Samsung Note 5. Uh, it's tied to my wireless network. I'm going to open the uh, Media House application, and you'll see it shows my Plex Media server there. I'm going to click Browse. We're going to do Video, Movies, All Movies, and uh, there's the video that's in our folder there. Let's go ahead and launch it to see if it works. And now this is 1080p at uh, 60 frames per second, so maybe a little bit of spotty playback on my Android device over the Wi-Fi, but uh, uh, it looks like it's playing pretty okay. So there we have a uh, playback over DLNA from the Plex Media Server to my uh, Samsung Note 5. And now let's go ahead and try the PlayStation now. All right, so uh, now over on the PlayStation 4, we need to go to the Media Player application. And uh, note that it wasn't there by default, uh, but there was an option on the menu. I just had to go ahead and download it for free. But uh, let's go ahead and launch the Media Player and uh, see if we can see our uh, Plex server. Now the PlayStation is hooked up over Wi-Fi, and uh, okay, so we see the Plex Media Server. So let's go ahead and select it, and uh, let's go ahead and click on Video, Movies, and All Movies, and we see our video there. So let's go ahead and launch that, and uh, it, so it is uh, 1080p over 60, uh, 1080p at 60 over Wi-Fi. So, uh, but we see it starts playing pretty much instantly, and uh, that's pretty much it for this one, guys. Uh, really hope you enjoyed this around two of uh, setting up your own media server. And uh, if you liked the video, make sure you like it. If you really liked it, make sure you go ahead and subscribe. And uh, thanks for watching.